Update 2 on Major Hurricane Odile, which is currently located uh, between the mainland of Mexico and the southern tip of the Bay of California Peninsula as a 125 mile per hour Category 3 storm with an air pressure of 922 millibars, quite a staggering low number for uh, a storm that doesn't have the high winds you'd expect for that pressure. Its position is 21.1 degrees north, 108.9 degrees west as of 9pm UTC on September 14th. The storm certainly poses a grave risk to the southern part of Bayer California uh, where it could strike as a category 3 or even a category 4 hurricane depending on what it does in the next 12 hours. It could intensify, it could weaken a little bit more but we're looking at a major hurricane landfall or two um, on the Bayer California Peninsula. Um, and the storm is expected to graze the western coast of that uh, as it moves towards the northwest, weakening, weakening all along the way. Hurricane warnings in effect for a large area, Punta Abriojo to La Paz. Uh, hurricane watches in effect from Punta Abriojo to Punta Eugenia and La Paz to Loreto on the eastern side. Tropical storm warnings and watches in effect for many other areas as well, including on the mainland, mostly the eastern coast, um, exhibiting tropical storm warning. Um, conditions or um, warning signals at the moment. So as a category 3 storm above fairly warm waters 28 or 29 degrees Celsius that will slowly begin to decrease but it should remain above the 26 degree threshold for the next two or three days um, and beyond day three the storm will move towards the northwest um, towards the northern part of the peninsula and eventually dissipate. Uh, wind shear is going to be low to moderate, a high amount um, a few hundred miles towards the northwest, but not in its immediate vicinity, decreasing amounts towards its east and west. Um, looking at the uh, water vapour imagery, a lot of dry air in abundance towards the storm's west, but it should be shielded for the most part, at least for the next day or two as it makes landfall. Uh, looking at the intensity forecast models, only one of them predicts further strengthening, the rest of them gradual or more than gradual weakening. Uh, so it could go either way at this point, but it looks like it's going to be weakening on the cards, but one should be prepared for an even stronger storm, which is still a possibility. The models are fairly um, agreed on what will happen over the next three days, grazing the western coast of the Bay of California Peninsula, and the remnants of the storm may move uh, into Mexico and then eventually towards Arizona. Uh, wind shear is likely to remain low for the next two or three days at least before beginning to rise. Uh, sea surface temperatures will begin to drop off a cliff after around two or three days, um, three days maximum, uh, unlikely to be um, uh, um, favourable by then. And the water vapour relative humidity, uh, a gradual decline is on the cards as the storm enters more unfavourable conditions. But as for the time being, conditions looking good um, and the storm is set to make landfall as a major hurricane in the next 12 hours. Obviously precautions should be made to the fullest. Uh, looking at this um, model run as well, a uh, more visual representation here showing where the um, storm will head towards the northwest and it appears the northern side of the storm may be the most um, potent but we'll examine that a little bit more on the satellite imagery and this model in particular uh, predicts the storm to move a bit offshore towards the end of day three. So the latest satellite imagery you can see the eye of the storm very clearly defined um, and it's been jogging around a little bit left and right um, towards the uh, north northwest in general. Um, so if you look at it from that vantage point, you can see how it has such a low pressure, uh, but the winds do not quite match that, uh, but still 125 mile per hour winds headed at the moment directly towards the southern tip of the Bay of California Peninsula if you extrapolate that track. Uh, but of course hurricanes don't follow straight lines and we could see a landfall area uh, slightly to the east or indeed the west of that. Um, but certainly something to prepare for on the whole peninsula and indeed the Mexican mainland may see some stormy conditions there too. Looking at the latest tropics worldwide, Odile and 16E are currently going on in the eastern Pacific. Another investors form there as well, 97E, which could be de developed into our next storm. Edouard is now a stronger Category 1 hurricane with winds of, I believe, 85 miles per hour. And Kalmegi in the western Pacific entering the South China Sea is weakening, is now a tropical storm. 56 tropical storms have formed so far in 2014 worldwide. 30 of those have become Category 1 hurricanes, or their equivalent, around the world. And 17 have become Category 3 storms with winds of 115 miles per hour plus sustained. Um, and of course, Odile has become the 17th 
just two away from 2010 worldwide. You can visit Force 13 on any of its six outlets. The website force13.com will uh, keep you up to date on all the goings on Tropics Wise. The video pages will also have regular updates on the um, pressing storm matters. Obviously, they are usually prioritised as to which one is the most risk. Uh, but you can see that YouTube and Daily Motion to search Force 13. The social platforms, Facebook and Twitter, the same um, keyword at Force 13 on Twitter. And you can add Force 13 for Tropical Weather Chat on Skype personally. And of course, if you visit the control room and the forum, that's also available on the website. The control room giving you a more visual representation of what's going on in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific. The next update on this storm will follow in 24 hours' time.